Well, here I was thinking we were gonna have ourselves a quiet day. Yeah, we, we got through so many hours without doing so much as anything and watching everybody else stumble all over themselves in the league to make bad decisions, whether it be the three eight-year contracts handed out by the Lightning or the Oilers re-signing Kane and signing Campbell in the same day or the carousel of goalies that has appeared in Colorado. Here we were thinking that, hmm, this would be a calm day, and the most exciting thing that would come about today from our perspective would be wherever the hell Johnny Gaudreau would wind up. But, oh no, did our front office have something else planned for us, because I was just calmly sitting around, and I get a notification on my phone. What is that? The Golden Knights are involved with a trade? Ooh, this is exciting. I wonder what new exciting face we're going to have to see fly around the fortress next year. Nope. <laughs> In case you haven't seen already, the Vegas Golden Knights trade left wing Max Pacioretty and defenseman Dylan Coughlin to the Carolina Hurricanes for nothing. Literally nothing. We get nothing other than to say we have $7.76 million more to play around with this offseason in cap space. Now, let's look back on this trade from the 20,000-foot perspective before we get into the 6-foot perspective that is me being a diehard fan. 20,000-foot perspective, this trade was going to have to happen. Everyone I've talked to, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be fellow, whether it be fellow fans, we all know that one of the bigger name players wasn't going to be wearing the Golden Knights jersey come October when we laced it up against LA. The issue here is I didn't expect it to be a member of the top six. Hell, a member of the top line. Max Pacioretty is essentially the reason that two years ago went the way it did, being that he scored over 30 goals and had over 60 points. He was almost a point-per-game player in the last season, despite all the injuries that he had. And there was a moment where he hadn't played for three weeks and was still our leading goal scorer right off the kick start of this last season after he put up a bunch of goals against Seattle and Los Angeles and consecutive nights to open up the year. But... <laughs> I, j I just, I don't even, I don't even know what we're thinking anymore because, you know, the Pacioretty trade from, from a distance, I guess makes sense. He's one of the few people who we can move and has a rather hefty cap hit that we get some interest from championship quality teams. And let's be honest, Carolina is now well and truly supplanted itself into win now mode, especially in the Eastern Conference, going up against the likes of the Rangers, the Whitening, the Toronto Maple Leafs, teams like that. And now that they've added Max Pacioretty, they have no reason not to go try and win the Eastern Conference, win the President's Trophy, and ultimately win the, try and win the Stanley Cup. The issue that I have with this deal uh, from the six-foot perspective as opposed to the 20,000-foot perspective is that we essentially had to give them Dylan Coughlin so we wouldn't have to hold on to any um, money and retain any salary on his deal. So essentially, it cost us two players to get one player off the book. Which is really, really, really irritating from our perspective. Now, if we look at it, continue to look at it from the from the higher up perspective, we can think about it in a utilitarian way. Like, oh, cool, we have more cap space to play with. Oh, you know, we could go sign a big name like Johnny Gaudreau. Oh, wait, what's that? Wait a second, he just signed in Columbus. So, big guy, off the board. So what are we gonna do with this extra cap space? We're going right now, we're currently operating with 12 million in almost 13 million in free cap. And the Golden Knights don't have a lot of people left to sign. Obviously we've got Riley Smith coming up and we really hope, I personally really hope that he gets re-signed. And you know, there's that handshake agreement that was floating around, you know, the three by five or the three year, $5 million extension that we would, that was reported all over the place like a week and a half ago. And then obviously we have our, our RFAs and you know, Brett Howden, Nick Waugh, Nick Haig, Keegan Colasar, the like. And, you know, they have to get contracts too. But I can't help but thinking of this as another iteration of the Marc-Andre Fleury trade from last year, where we got nothing just to dump the salary to go out and try and get something. Now, it seems that that something, you know, that something last year was the flexibility to go get a player like Jack Eichel, which can on paper be incredibly beneficial to our hockey club. But this year, I'm not really sure that there's anything big waiting on the horizon. The only thing that I can think of that we can spend this money on is to re-sign our UFAs and our RFAs and maybe 
if we're lucky, go get one person. Now, there's also another part of me that thinks this is a setup move, um, maybe a preamble to another trade that can come moving more money off the books to go after some really big guy. Uh, what jumps to mind to me initially is Patrick Kane. You know, Chicago has made it abundantly clear to even the layman being myself uh, that they are essentially the garage sale of the NHL right now, whether it be moving on from Dominic Kubli, Kirby Doc, Alex DeBrincat, and then basically saying, yeah, we're going to entertain offers on Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, and Seth Jones. They're essentially going to sell everything and the kitchen sink. And hell, the Golden Knights might just be a buyer for one of those players, probably Patrick Kane. Um, I mean, obviously that would require a couple of more moves on top of this patch ready Coglin deal in return for nothing. And I'm just going to emphasize that again. We sent two players out the door for nothing. The only link that I can think uh, that would bring Patrick Kane to Vegas is through his agent, Pat Brisson, who's also Jack Eichel's agent and the father of our first, uh, of one of our first round draft picks and highly rated prospects, Brendan Brisson. So, in summation, the Golden Knights traded Max Pacioretty and Dylan Coughlin away to the Carolina Hurricanes for nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> and we don't even have all of our, and, you know, we're standing here on the end of today, end of July 13th, Wednesday. I, I have no idea who's going to be under contract come Thursday. You know, I would hope that we would get the Riley Smith deal finalized. And I would hope that we'd get Nick Haig, Nick Waugh, and Brett Howden, and Keegan Colasar all signed on for the next few years because they're all incredibly valuable players to the organization as a whole. And I can see how it's a reasonable ask to want to have five players instead of two because that's what this patcheretti Coglin deal allowed us to do. It allowed us to get rid of two players in order to hold on to five players. The, the only, one of the catches and the way that this deal isn't quite sitting with me very well is one, the cost that we paid to get Max Pacioretty initially three years ago when we traded a first round pick, Nick Suzuki and Tomas Tatar to the Montreal Canadiens, which Tatar in of himself was not a good deal for the Golden Knights in that inaugural season. It's probably the only mistake they made costing the organization a first, a second and a third round pick. And so essentially to get Max Pacioretty three years ago, it cost us a first round, a f two first round picks, one in the form of Tomas Tatar and Nick Suzuki. You know, we took the gamble back then, either between having to pick between Cody Glass and Nick Suzuki and uh, jury's still out, but Nick Suzuki is an everyday player for the Montreal Canadiens. And last I checked, Cody Glass is on a two-way deal with the Nashville Predators. So either way, we lost that deal. And you know, initially with Max Pacioretty's numbers with the team, stellar. Made it worth every penny we paid. But now that we're standing on the back end of his time with the Golden Knights and we're realizing that, yeah, um, you know, he was a really good player, but we paid all that for three years. And this this really is linking into so many things that has gone on within the Golden Knights managing and roster structure being in go for it mode for five consecutive years eventually had its harms. And this, this trade, this cap dump for, if we're really going to call it what it is, it's a cap dump is going to be invariably linked to the Jack Eichel trade. Essentially in the last two years to make room for Jack Eichel, we have gotten rid of with no return, Marc-Andre Fleury, Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, Max Pacioretty, and Dylan Coughlin. Five incredibly serviceable roster players that we used there as capital to get the new shiny thing in Jack Eichel. Obviously, he was going to go somewhere last year, and I'm just as excited as anybody else is to have him in a gold sweater. But at the same time, I, I kind of feel like that one uh, sorcerer from the end of Doctor Strange, the bill always comes due. And it seems... For the Golden Knights, the bill has, in fact, come due. Um, now, we still have a long off season, and who knows, like I referenced earlier, this could be the first of many moves, or this could simply be the cap space that we needed to re-sign all of our assets and plow forward into the regular season with the best roster that we can. 
Obviously, this frees up a top six role for one of the players that's currently under contract to fill. You know, whether Jonathan Marcheseau moves up or whether we take a flyer and give Ivan Morozov or Brendan Brisson a try at the NHL level to open up the season. There are a lot of opportunities for this to go well with the assets that the team already is in possession of. And then there's obviously the super optimistic view of, hey, we're just, you know, we're one trade away, whether that trade be, you know, a package deal of Laurent Brossois and Brady McNabb or Laurent Brossois and Alec Martinez to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for uh, Patrick Kane. Uh, there, there's still the opportunity for things to work out, but, you know, a couple hours removed from this trade, I, as I'm sure like the rest of the fan base, is stinging because this is the second summer in a row where a really likable, really talented player has gone by the wayside for no return, no draft picks, no nothing, just a box that says future considerations. Uh, I, I trust that uh, Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee, and I'm going to assume Bruce Cassidy was in on this decision as well. I, I trust that they have the best intentions with this, and I know that somewhere in a room in Henderson, there's a lot of very happy executives because, oh, we got the Carolina Hurricanes to take a contract that we were going to have to move at the deadline anyway. But again, it it's it's painful right now. Another friendly face, identity guy, face borderline face of the franchise over the last three seasons. And just like that, he's now going to be wearing red. Um, yeah. On, on, on other news... Um, Golden Knights did a couple of other small things, signing um, an AHL player to a two-way contract and signing some guy from Finland from the Finnish national team at the Olympics uh, named Mananen, who scored the gold medal winning goal at the Tokyo, or yeah, at the uh, Winter Olympics this year in Beijing. So who knows, a 30-something year old or a 30-year-old guy from the KHL who has a gold medal could slot right in for Max Pacioretty, who I get it. Doesn't, last I checked, I don't think he has a gold medal, so eh, who knows? Um, but obviously there's going to be a lot more signings that happen in the next few days, fingers crossed, because I don't want to have to wait until August uh, to know who's going to be suiting up for us um, come September and October. And a little bit of stability never hurt anyone. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm speechless. Uh, I'm, I'm confused, a little concerned, but at the same time, optimistic and yet, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go cautiously optimistic. That's as far as I'm going to go right now. I'm cautiously optimistic that this trade will in the long run wind up working out well for the Golden Knights, hopefully better than it works out for the Carolina Hurricanes. Like, I'm not wishing ill will on Max Pacioretty, and I will be really excited to see him come back to the Fortress next year. Uh, but it's just sad to see him in a different jersey. Um, but yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to like it and uh, subscribe down below for more content like this. Lord only knows, as the offseason progresses, it's going to get more and more fun. I'm going to get more and more emotional. And then once we get to the regular season, I'm, I'm going to be more of a basket case than Steve Dangle is. Uh, so yeah, uh, like subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next one.